everybody. In this video, I'm going to explain what a plasma is. Actually, the word plasma has two meanings. One refers to blood plasma. We won't talk about that in this video. And the other one refers to plasma physics, the one we will talk in this video. So, what is plasma? Plasma physics is a fourth state of matter. Yes, I say fourth. There are actually four main states and not three. What we learned at school was incorrect. But before giving you more details on the plasma state, let's go back to the three others. The first one is a solid state. It's fairly common around us. Most of the things around us are in a solid state. For instance, a chair, a table, the wall of a house. But let's take an example when it's possible to have the three states. Water. Let's take an ice cube. Right now, the cube is in a solid state. If we put it on a hot plate, the ice cube will melt and become water in a liquid state. This state is the second state of matter. Water is the most common liquid on Earth. But there are also other kinds of liquids such as ethanol, which is a drinking alcohol or hydrocarbons like the gas you use to make your car run. Let's go back to the example of water. If we decide to increase the temperature of the hot plate, then the water will start to evaporate. In fact, the water will not disappear, but it will go from a liquid state to a gaseous state. This third state is also very present around us. The air that we breathe in is in state. And now, if we keep increasing the temperature of the hot plate, could you tell me what will happen? Not easy to answer, is it? At school we learned that there are only three states. But in fact, that is not correct. A fourth one exists, and it's called plasma. If the temperature of the hot plate rises to several 10,000 degrees, the gas will change to a plasma state. But why did we learn at school that there were three states of matter instead of four? In fact, unlike the three other states, solid, liquid and gas, plasma does not exist on the Earth's surface under normal conditions, except in few cases. There are two main places where the plasma can be seen on Earth. Uh, they are the lightning and the aurora borealis. What is the common point between those two plasma? Lightning and the aurora borealis. They both emit light. I think you get it. A plasma is a gas which is able to emit light. So if we manage to heat up the water enough to turn the water into the plasma state, we will see a gas emitting light. As I said, on Earth, the plasma state is uncommon, but surprisingly, 99% of the bionic matter of the universe is in a plasma state. For instance, our dear Sun is a plasma, and the star as well. Interstellar clouds and comets are also plasma. Now that you have an idea about the meaning of plasma, I'm going to give you more detail on it. Let's go back to the beginning concerning the solid state. The matter around us is composed of atoms, represented here by small balls. When the matter is in a solid state, those balls are closely packed together. They cannot move freely. As a result, a solid state has a stable, definite shape and definite volume. If the temperature increases, those balls have enough energy to move relative to each other. This means that the shape of a liquid is not defined. If we keep increasing the temperature, the liquid will become gas, which means the ball can move freely. If we keep increasing the temperature, the gas will become plasma. But what is the difference between a gas and a plasma? Let's zoom in on one of those balls to get more insight into the questions. Those balls represent atoms. By zooming in, we can see that the atom is composed of one nucleus in the center and electrons that orbit it. Such system looks like the solar system. The sun is represented by the nucleus and the electron by the planets. This analogy is not entirely correct, but for the message I want to get across, it's fine. In its entirety, the atom is neutral, but the nucleus is positive while the electrons are negative. The number of positive charges is equal to the number of negative charges. One electron represents a negative charge. If the gas is heated up to a very high temperature, 
more than 10,000 degrees, the atom will be able to take the energy from the heat onto free one electron. The release electron is commonly called free electron, and the atom become an ion. By analogy with the solar system, this will mean that the Earth will have no binding anymore with the Sun and that it will not turn around it anymore. In that case, we say that the atom has been ionized. From the beginning, we choose heat as energy source, but in fact, we can create a plasma with other type of energy sources, such as electric energy, electromagnetic energy, like a laser for instance. If the number of created ionized atoms is high enough, the gas becomes plasma. The main feature of a plasma is the presence of charges. It's a gas, although ionized, where positive and negative charges interact with each other. For example, electrons represented by the blue balls collide with ions represented in red or atoms represented in green. During the collision, the electrons will give a part of their energy to the ions or the atoms. Then, the ions or the atoms get excited and become purple here. Naturally, the ions or the atoms want to go back to their fundamental states. To do that, they will release the excited energy by emitting a photon, which means they will emit light. This explains why plasma is able to induce light and why the aurora borealis and the interstellar clouds have such nice colors. In everyday life, many things or objects have a connection with plasma. For instance, plasma display, fluorescent lamps or compact fluorescent lamps. Plasma is also involved in the process of some electronic compounds. Those compounds are really important for the manufacturing of computers and smartphones. Indeed, in order to make those compounds as small as possible, we need techniques which are able to model the matter on a very small scale. As a plasma is composed of iron, it's possible to use it to miniaturize those compounds. Those processes are taught at the University of Orléans in France, precisely at the Polytech Orléans Engineering School in the major Génie Physique et Système Embarqué. This name of this major is English means physics, engineering, and embedded systems. Plasma are also present in many other fields, such as plasma-assisted combustion, spacecraft propulsion, plasma actuator for flow control, plasma arc welding, and in the study of electric arcs. All those fields are still studied in laboratories in order to get more insight on them and to improve them. But the plasma is far from having revealed all its hidden secrets, and it's likely to have more application in store. For instance, researchers try to use plasma to depollute gases on liquids, such as in water treatments. Many medical products are still present in the water after treatment, since it's really hard to remove or destroy them. A plasma treatment could be an alternative to decrease the concentration of those products in water. Let's take another example, this time in gas depolition. CO2 is one of the main gases responsible for global warming. Thanks to plasma, we could convert CO2 into hydrocarbon. The hydrocarbons could be then used as gasoline. Then the combustion will emit CO2, which could be converted back into hydrocarbons by plasma treatment. The loop will be complete and there will be no more CO2 emission. Other researchers study the effect of plasma on surface on certain materials. After a plasma treatment, some surfaces will become hydrophilic, while others will become hydrophobic. Another application is energy storage. As mentioned earlier, ion can be used to etch or to deposit particles on a very small scale, like a nanometer scale. This allows us to build solar panels, for in instance, or to build hydrogen fuel cells, which allow the storing of energy on a very small scale. Another big project is the building of the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor in Cadarache, in the south of France. The goal of this project is to build a very small sun on Earth in order to solve the energy problem. Finally, 
I would like to spend a couple of minutes presenting one last application, since I'm doing my research in that field. Some plasmas have demonstrated their ability to be used in medicine. In Orléans, for instance, the Grémy laboratory has been the first to show that plasma has anti-tumor effect in vivo. But plasma is also studied in many other fields, such as in dermatology, cosmetic, dentistry, and sterilization. To summarize, plasma can be used in many different and various applications. Despite its rarity on Earth, plasma is very much used by humans. So, if you are a student and you want to study plasma at university, I would like you to know that the Polytech Orléans Engineering School, which is a part of University of Orléans, the last year of Génie Physique et Système Embarqué Major, will allow you to learn more about plasma physics and its applications. During the fifth year, the courses are taught in English in order to welcome international students. I thank you for watching this video. Now you know what plasma is. Audio -jump.